Hi folks, Vitaly here from HelpingHandAffiliate.com. In this video, what I want to talk about is a massive widespread problem that's been going on in the SEO world for a while, and that is Google not indexing your blog posts, mine included. And here's actually an example of what I'm talking about. Here's one of my blog posts that it does say URL is not on Google, and it, there's also situations where it says it's been discovered, currently not indexed. And this is a very frustrating thing to experience. I'm someone that actually blogs for a living, and most of my blog content on this particular website gets indexed, gets pretty good rankings, I get traffic on my website, but when these kinds of things happen, it, it really blows the wind out of my sales. It's like, what's the point of blogging if I'm gonna have these situations happen? And I'm not the only one that's been having it, you're probably having it if you're watching this video right now or you heard about it and you're looking for solutions. And this particular blog post that's right here, I've actually had it up since September 2nd of this year, so it's been up for two months and still hasn't been indexed. Now, um, the thing to understand is that this is a situation where many people are having it. People that are doing good SEO, people that are doing bad SEO. It's a problem that is just really widespread. And in order to explain what the solutions are, I have to give you some important fundamentals of just basic SEO stuff because there's different there's different levels of people that are understand the SEO game that are watching this video right now. And if we're not all on the same page, then the solutions that I'm going to be sharing with you might just look like a completely different language to you. And so what I want to share with you is first the fundamentals of stuff that I found that is very, very important for SEO, uh, good SEO health in general, so you increase your odds of indexing. And then the second part of this video, I want to talk about the specific solutions that I found that have helped my blog posts that weren't indexed for a long time get indexed on, on Google and start to get good rankings. Now, this is not 100% guarantee because one of the things that I learned while I was researching this stuff is that Google doesn't necessarily necessarily uh, have to index everything there's this you know belief that you know when you create a blog and you target a certain keyword you're gonna get indexed you're gonna get ranked you're gonna you know go to the first page of Google first position get all that traffic and make a lot of money blocking that's the, the the pipe dream that people have if you know anything about SEO you know that it's much more complicated than that it takes a lot of time to grow a blog you have to write incredible content and this is me talking about fundamentals you have to have good hosting on your blog in other words it has to load really quickly and for example this post right here, it loads pretty quickly for me. It's got a 97 score for mobile and a 93 score for desktop, and you want to be in the green, like maybe high 80s and, high and up, because if you have very crappy hosting that's unreliable, server is down, that interrupts when Google spiders try to crawl your content, that impacts it impacts indexing and subsequently ranking and all that kind of stuff. So hosting plays a major factor in all of this stuff as well. You also want to be able to create high quality content. If you create very crappy content that people don't want to read or you like write like a robot, you don't write for people or you copy other people's content, you're not going to get rankings, you're not going to get indexed, and you're going to get screwed by Google. Most of the time that indexing issues happen, this is one of the biggest things that I have stumbled upon, it actually happens mostly because of you creating the problem whether you know it or not and that includes me as well so um, that's very important stuff to understand and if there is anything right now that I'm saying that doesn't make sense to you there's a good chance that you're kind of new to SEO and to blogging as well and you need good fundamental training now there's a lot of different programs that are out there that are pretty good and in fact what's funny is that this particular blog post that I have reviewing this particular program is actually one of the good ones but the one that I do recommend above all else is called Wealthy Affiliate it's the program that taught me blogging it has great hosting and great tools great training for teaching you how to create a blog and something that you're passionate about in life here's actually a preview of it I will leave a link to it underneath this video you can try this program for free you get seven days of my coaching and you get 10 lessons of free training uh, here's actually a preview of this uh, first training that you get it's made by uh, these two guys, awesome dudes, they teach you about blogging, they teach you how to set up a, blog, a profitable blog, there is an upgraded membership, they do give you free hosting with that upgraded membership that is very reliable, in fact, that it, it is the hosting that I use for this site, which gives me the high scores for my blog. But that's what I recommend if you're new to SEO or you're not getting the results that you want. Now with all of this set aside, let me get to the second part of this uh, particular uh, video, which is giving you solutions that I've personally found to the issue with uh, Google not indexing your blog posts. So 
what I want to say first is that you do want to have certain tools in place and the most important one is Google Search Console. Now Google Search Console uh, is right over here. It is a site that you can verify uh, your website with and you can then you know take uh, you can find out which URLs are not indexed. You can ask you, uh, Google to inspect it but if you don't make certain changes and fixes and it wasn't getting indexed before odds are it's probably not going to get indexed in the future. So the solutions that I'm going to be talking about will help with that. Once you make the major changes then do a URL inspection again and this is an advanced tool for certain people so again if you're new to this you're better off just doing something like trying the wealthy affiliate program and starting from scratch and then getting to this because it'll work your way back into this kind of stuff so um, there are 11 solutions that I found and it's not a guarantee that it's going to work but it has helped me in my situation so for example uh, there's a, a blog post that I'm going to be link, linking to uh, underneath this particular video and it gets into the details of all of these things but the last one over here uh, these are all URLs that weren't indexed they were all X's at one point and now at least five of them have been indexed and I'm still waiting on the other five to uh, index but anyway I'm not going to get into all of these you can you're welcome to read this blog post on your own after you watch this video I will also embed it on this website which will take you here but I want to focus on a few of the major ones that I've seen that have helped me the first one is fix your blog post titles so what does that mean well most people that come to me for SEO advice or other people that I see doing SEO and blogging and all that kind of stuff they don't know what they're doing when it comes to writing good titles they do things where they'll find a keyword like uh, you know how to lose belly f fat fast and that's a keyword that gets traffic it gets you know potentially a lot of search volumes and all that stuff and they'll literally copy and paste that title into their blog and then write some crappy content about how to do just that the problem with this is a couple of things actually First of all, there's a lot of people that are trying to rank under the same keyword that are literally doing the same thing. In other words, they're taking that title and they're pasting it into their blog post. And so Google has to kind of, when they see that there's like, for example, a hundred different blog posts all targeting the exact same keyword with the exact same title, they have to pick the one that has the best content, the best authority. They, they basically have to uh, filter out which one is the best out of all of this. So you want to stand out when you create your blog post title. So instead of having a, a title like how to lose belly fat fast you can create a blog post title that's like 10 easy hacks to lose belly fat fast that already makes you stand out versus the other ones that are literally copying and pasting the same keyword and what I've noticed in my personal experience is that for me personally I was doing a lot of product reviews for my website and one of the things that I was doing was product something review is it legit? Is it a scam? Is it this and this and that? There's a lot of people in my niche that do this exact same stuff as well. They'll literally rinse and repeat the same stuff. Program something review, is it a scam? Program something review, is it legit? They'll just keep doing that over and over and over again. And it might work depending on you know how competitive the keyword is and how much authority your website has, but you don't want to be a one-trick pony when it comes to this kind of stuff. You want to differentiate your keywords. You want to make them stand out because you're writing not just to get Google's attention, but just as importantly if not more so the readers attention and blog post titles that capture the person's attention like with the example I said like 10 hacks to lose belly fat fast that's a much more eye-catching title for people to click on your blog post if they see it on Google and then visit and Google takes note of that Google's algorithms one of the other major things that I've learned are very much a reflection of how people view your content so titles are a huge part in kind of like you know throwing the the the, the, the bait the, the fish hook in to try to attract uh, the traffic to you and so if you're someone that has been making such that has been doing stuff like I've been doing like is how good is it this is just not a good title when I think about it in hindsight and I'm gonna be fixing that title and testing this out but what I have noticed is that from the moment that I started applying this particular tip every single blog post that I've written ever since I stopped doing this boring stuff and just started writing much more uh, better titles in general for my product reviews like uh, here's what you need to know uh, is it worth the price? My full, eh, my full review is okay. Uh, here's what you need to know. I got it so you don't have to. These blog posts have all been ranking 
and getting indexed very quickly on Google and ranking much better on Google in general. So I stopped doing that old stuff that everyone else is doing and I started just being much more unique about it. I just started thinking about it more of like, you know, I want to make a better title, stand out from the competition and you really will. So, so far this has been working for me. That's tip number one. Tip number two is fix your permalink. Okay, so this is something that I may have a lot of SEO people argue with me with, but I have noticed this working as well. So what is the permalink? Well, just to give you an example, if I go to uh, this particular blog post that isn't indexed yet, the permalink is this area after my URL, which says blogging fast lane review. Now, some SEO people will tell you that if you want to get ranked for a certain keyword, you have to put that keyword into the permalink. So in this particular case, blogging fast lane review is the keyword that I'm trying to rank for. As long as it's the permalink, I have a better chance of getting ranked for it. That's what common sense SEO would tell you. However, there's a lot of other people, just like with the titles example, doing the exact same thing with their permalinks. In other words, if you look up this particular product on Google, you're going to see a lot of people that are ranked on the first page, by the way, that are ranking with blogging fast lane review. So my tip right now might sound a bit contradictory because obviously there are blog posts ranking on the first page but here's the thing if you're again that one trick pony kind of person that's like product something a review product something blah 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 is it a scam and this and that and you make your permalinks like that you keep repeating that over and over and over again you're just you become way too robotic and you should be less robotic when it comes to seo and more uh, personal be more opinionated about the stuff that you write and your permalinks should be the same as your title so one of the things that i'm currently doing and also seeing results with is that when I create great titles, my permalink is exactly the same as my uh, title is. So for example, product something review, uh, five horrible things I found out about it. That's literally what my permalink is going to be. Product A review, five horrible things I found out about it. That already makes my permalink different than the plenty of other people that are doing program something review and just keep rinsing and repeating that. Permalinks can play a very important role and ever since I've been implementing that plus the title tip that I was just giving you, I've been seeing my blog posts get indexed much better. That's a really important point to understand. Now, if you do implement this, understand something. If you have any other blog posts across your site that are linking to the one that you change your permalink to, you absolutely have to update those uh, those links. Otherwise, you're going to get a 404 er errors and that's going to bring about SEO uh, disaster across your blog. You don't want that to happen. So in other words, if I change the permalink here, every blog post that I have on my website that's linking back to this blog post, I want to change the internal links so it can update to the new one. So when people click on that link and they visit the new blog post, it'll visit and not take them to a 404 page. That's very important to remember, to understand. Now, the next tip that I want to talk about, let me just see which one I want to focus on here. Um, personalized content, not robotic content. That's a really huge one to understand. Too many people write to appease Google, the Google search engine, not necessarily to write good stuff for uh, people. Stop doing that. Create more personalized content. That's something that I've been really trying to uh, break away from for the past couple of years. Um, not every piece of content that you write with, you know, so, with a lot of passion, this and this and that is going to get ranked pretty well. But if you write robotic content where it's like you're constantly chasing the keyword and it just doesn't seem natural the way that you write it. And I do actually give you an example of this in number five over here where you can see uh, what I'm talking about. It's, it, it just reads better. And if it reads better for people, that it, it's going to index better and it's going to rank better on Google. That's just something that I've personally noticed. Some people are going to be like, no, you have to have the keyword in the first paragraph. You have to, to have the keyword in this and this and that. It's basically like, you know, throwing breadcrumbs to Google saying, hey, you know, rank for this keyword, rank for this keyword. Do less of that. You still want to target the keyword in your title. Don't get me wrong. And you do want to naturally write and input the keyword where it makes sense. But you want to write naturally. And you want to write about topics that you have a great deal of passion and experience in because that makes you write better content. Content. You write better content, you're much better off uh, in getting indexed on Google and then subsequently getting ranked better on Google. So that's a very important tip to understand as well. Uh, I'm going to mention a few more of these before I finish up. Like I said, you can read all, ten, all 11 of them um, uh, underneath this YouTube video. I'm going to leave a link to it. But let's see what the next one I'm going to... Okay, so use the Google URL inspection tool, but don't go crazy with it. So this tool right here, when, for example, this one wasn't indexing, I just kept 
you know, inspect, inspect, inspect. They just kept pressing it to inspect. And it kept saying, we'll inspect it, we'll put it in the order in, its, in which it's received, and it still hasn't been indexed. So if you keep indexing something, but you're not making any changes to the post, and it's still not getting indexed, you have to make some fundamental changes. And some fundamental changes might include changing the title, changing the permalink, improving the content, adding more internal links, just doing more good quality stuff to the article to make it work. Because if it wasn't working before and you keep telling Google to index it, but it's not doing it, just keep, you can't force it to happen is what I'm trying to say. So this particular tool over here, the Google Search Console tool, don't abuse this. What I used to do was every single time I'd publish a new post on my blog, like a helpinghandaffiliate.com, I'd go straight to the Google Search Console and just URL inspect it. Now, what I'm doing, and this is a tip that I was given, and so far it's working really well, is whenever I publish new content on my site, I don't go to the URL inspection tool. I let Google naturally find it. And if your site is high authority, it'll crawl it. Also, if you have a site map on your site and you, and you connect it with Google Search Console, uh, see, December 11th, it's been crawled on its own. I did not tell Google to crawl it uh, manually. It did it on its own. That's the ideal place to be. So for a new blog post that you write, let Google naturally crawl it. Because chances are, if you have a high authority site, it'll index it within a day. If you have a new site, maybe within like maybe maybe it's like less than six months old, odds are it might be in the Google sandbox, in which case it might take a few days, maybe even weeks to index. That's normal, but let it index it naturally. You should only really use the URL inspection tool for situations like you have a blog post like I was just showing you that hasn't been indexed for two months. You make changes that are necessary to it and then you do the URL inspection. Use it in a way where it's like only when it's necessary, not every single time. Let me do one or two more tips to make sure uh, that everything is going well. Um, so after making the changes, you do a URL inspection and give it time. In other words, if you have like my blog post that hasn't been indexed for two months, I'll be making the changes to it. I just wanted to give you a sample of what, uh, what I'm gonna be doing. But once you make the changes and you do a URL inspection, don't go back after like five minutes or a few hours and like why hasn't it been indexed yet? it takes time okay that's a very important thing to understand don't just again don't go back to abusing the the url inspection tool like i was just saying use it when it's necessary and the final tip that i'm going to give is just wait it out okay this is very very important one of the things that i learned for example is that with these 10 urls here's a screenshot of urls that were not indexed they were all x's and now five of them have been indexed maybe about two or three of them indexed on their own. In other words, I didn't have to do anything of the stuff that I was telling you about. There are some blog posts that I have on my website and another one where I'm not doing that stuff that I was talking about before, product A review, is it a scam, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing good stuff with those things. So the fact that it wasn't getting indexed wasn't really my fault, at least I don't think so. And just by waiting it out, just by creating new blog content and internally linking back to the one that's not indexed, it just kind of happened on its own. And sometimes it might take weeks or months, even if you have an authority website and you're used to your uh, blog post getting picked up by Google and getting indexed very quickly. Suddenly, if it stops happening, it doesn't mean that you should start using the URL inspection tool and start forcing the index to happen. Sometimes it'll just happen on its own and you just have to wait it out. You can't just, you know, you're, you're, you're writing blog post after blog post after blog post and then one doesn't get indexed and suddenly you stop your entire progress of building your blog up just to make sure this uh, one that wasn't indexed starts to get indexed. Just keep going, keep blogging. The other one might just index and fix on its own. And that's another thing to understand. You have to let it go sometimes and just let it happen naturally. And that's one of the other things that I learned as well. So uh, I don't want to get into the other tips because I don't want to make this video any longer than it, is, than it is, but I really do hope that the stuff that I shared with you in this video has, uh, has helped you. Perhaps you have some experiences with the strategies that I listed in that helping you as well. Just understand it's not 100% guarantee. I have been seeing improvements in my indexing. Most of my blog posts have always been indexed and doing pretty well in Google. Um, so, so generally speaking, what I'm doing works. But there are some changes that you need to make. Sometimes we get caught up with you know bad information we hear or see elsewhere where sometimes uh, we're just really new to the subject as well. The point is that when things aren't going the right way, you have to be willing to make certain changes. And generally speaking, when I say good changes, I'm talking about stuff like improving your content, putting more work into your blog, because Google, in my opinion, they want to rank your content. And you just want to make it easier for them. Write more for people, be more personalized, write better quality content, make your titles better, change your permalinks if necessary, and just you know apply the tips that I've been giving you. You should see results from that kind of stuff. And it's just 
good practice in general for SEO and blogging. So I do hope that the tips that I've been sharing with you have improved your chances of getting indexed by Google and you're more than welcome to leave your questions, comments and all that kind of stuff. Again, I do want to strongly encourage you if you're new to blogging or if you're someone that hasn't had good results with it to try that wealthy affiliate program that I will be leaving a link to if you're on YouTube in the description and pinned comment uh, or if you're on my website to try that as well because it does teach you good blogging. They do provide you with awesome tools including hosting and very good stuff that teaches you SEO that for me personally has been working for many years and uh, I don't really see any reason why it should suddenly change. So with that said, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that uh, it was helpful and I hope you have a great one. Take care.